Pedro Silva Pereira on the composition on the future European Parliament. What did you decide today? Well, uh, we've decided that uh, we will send to the plenary of the European Parliament a proposal saying that uh, we should correct the allocation of seats in the European Parliament. We will uh, reduce the size of the European Parliament from 751 to 705 and uh, uh, ensuring that nobody would lose seats. And we will do that also complying with the principle of aggressive proportionality, the principle uh, laid down in the Lisbon Treaty, uh, in order to ensure that we correct the situations of unfairness that we have today. So in the end, we will have uh, a fair representation of the citizens in the European Parliament, and I think it's a step forward for European democracy. One of the biggest issues that have been raised, it's, it's a proposal by uh, President Macron, and seems to some support, the idea of transnational lists. Was that supported today? Well, the transnational list is a very uh, controversial issue, of course. Uh, the report is quite prudent, takes into account the debate, and uh, uh, it reminds that the European Parliament in the past was in favor of the transnational list in 2015, uh, we have uh, suggested the creation of the transnational list and now we are underlining that uh, to create the transnational list we need an unanimous decision of the e European Council. That's what uh, the report uh, is saying, so it's a quite prudent formulation. Anyhow, the debate will continue. Uh, uh, we have approved or, or also that in, in the case that we create the transnational list, uh, we should ensure that uh, um, each member country should be present in those lists. So the, the transnational list should take into account the member uh, countries. And, uh, uh, but this is uh, all to be discussed in the plenary and voted in the plenary. So let's see uh, the final result. So there's no final decision yet on the transnational list. But there will be 27 candidates on each list in ascending or descending order, would that be how it would look? Well, uh, in any uh, list there's an order, so yes. Uh, but uh, the, the general idea is that uh, um, uh, the European elections are often much more on national issues than uh, on European issues. So those who are in favor of the transnational list are saying that uh, it would help to uh, create uh, a new perception of the European dimension of the European elections. That's the goal. Others see some disadvantage, that's why the debate will continue in the plenary. We had now uh, a vote only in the uh, Constitutional Affairs Committee, uh, but it remains to be seen uh, what majority we can get in the plenary in uh, February. As a member of the S&D group, uh, is it something that your group as a whole supports and who do you think you would be your Spitzen candidat? Well, uh, uh, as a group, the political position of the group is in favor of the transnational list. As to the Spitzen candidat, well, it's too soon to, to, to say. Uh, we uh, still have to have a debate on that. Are you happy with the outcome of today's discussion? Uh, I was against distribution uh, seats after Brexit, after uh, British deputies, because uh, I am in favor of uh, uh, European Parliament with uh, less amount of uh, uh, members, because uh, Parliament with less amount of uh, members will be more effective, uh, uh, less cost, and there is guarantee of, of uh, confidence uh, uh, of uh, citizens. And uh, I was uh, also against um, establishing of uh, special constituency, uh, European constituency. I believe that uh, members should be elected uh, in uh, member states. You were one of the MEPs who were opposed to the pan-European list. Why have you rejected that idea? Well, uh, uh, as you probably know, I'm a true federalist and a true Europeanist, but uh, we don't know any federation. 
uh, like uh, Germany, USA, or even uh, 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 Switzerland, that have a single constituency, that have a pan-national uh, uh, list. So this is not a federalist uh, instrument. It's quite the opposite. In federations, what you have is lists in every state, but not a national one. So if federations, they have not a national list, why should Europe have a transnational list? This is really strange. We are being more popist than the Pope because we are defending something that even the federations, and we are not still a federation, they don't have. Then, I think this will uh, deepen the differences between the medium-sized and small states and the big ones, because in the transnational list, the big ones will be uh, more represented, what is natural, because they have a lot of uh, uh, people to vote, so they have millions of people more than the small and the middle-sized ones. And finally, I'd say that this uh, deepens the gap between citizens, electorate, and their representatives, because they will be more distant. So it's quite the contrary. So because I'm favoring in Europe, because I'm a federalist, I'm against the transnational list. This, this seems a paradox, but it's really, really uh, true. Then, as you probably imagine, this will be a major opportunity for populist and extremist movements because uh, 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 people like Le Pen or Giroud, they are known all across Europe. And so if they campaign in a transnational list, they will be more successful than other politicians that are only uh, known at state level.